Mike Chasen and John Lastinger back live from Cleveland Field. But we're just about ready for the kickoff here. Valdosta State University and Mississippi College. The Choctaws from Clinton, Mississippi, and the Blazers of Valdosta State. It's homecoming, 1993, and the white shirts are going to kick off to the left into your radio dial, and the black shirts all in black today. Back in black in 93, the Blazers of Hal Mummy. And standing back at the goal line is Blake Duncan. Here's the kickoff. We're underway. Gulf South Conference NCAA Division II action. Duncan's going to take it to 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Burst out of there to 30, 32, 33, 36 yard line. Blake Duncan with a tremendous return on this Saturday afternoon. The Blazers are going to set up shop at the 36 yard line. Great return that time by the senior, Blake Duncan. Yeah, I like to not to go with the Texas return, so. Uh, uh, Blake just a standard return right up the middle of the gut there and, and found a little seam there and good second effort, got it up to the 35. Nice start for the Blazers. Here's Chris Hatcher, the record-setting quarterback for Hal Mummy's team. He's going to face a four-man front. Now they're going to sneak one other man along the line, two down linemen. Here's Hatcher under the center. Got a motion man to this side. It's Pender. He's going to throw quickly to Pender at the 33, to the 35, barely gets to the 36-yard line, right back at the line of scrimmage. The man who made the stop for Mississippi College, the Choctaws, Richard Myers, the senior defensive end from Hattiesburg. He was the Gulf South Conference Defensive Player of the Week last week, had quite an outing against 1AA foe Sanford. As a matter of fact, 17 tackles. Well, he's got 69 on the year, Mike, so he leads the team. Uh, yeah, he's a big play, big hitter for that Choctaw defense. Here's Hatch under the center. Got two men split behind him. Got one man on the right side, two wideouts on the left. Audibilizing at the line of scrimmage. Four man front for the white shirts from Clinton. Motion man is Steve Greer. Caught 12 balls last week. Hatch is looking for Greer over the middle. Now he looks left side. Got his man Calvin Walker. Drops the football on the far side at the 37 yard line. It will be third and nine yards to go for the Blazers of Valdosta State. Good play by the Choctaw defense. What uh, we're seeing about what we expected, and that's a two-deep safety with uh, basically a five underneath zone and uh, have done it both times and uh, running successfully. That time Chris Hatcher looked to his right, uh, tried to find Steve Greer on that side, but ended up going all the way back across the field to his left side. Here's Hatch in the shotgun this time. Got Blake Duncan on his right side. Three receivers on the left. Lyman all preparing for pass blocking. Three going to rush this time for the white shirts from Clinton. Here's Hatch. Three-step drop. Looking left side. Got Duncan over here. Goes to his left. Goes to his right instead. And got Reginald Walker. He'll be tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Blazers are going to have to kick it away. We'll take a second here for our stations along the Blazers Sports Network to identify themselves. This is the Blazers Sports Network. After an outstanding kickoff return by Blake Duncan, the Blazers are not able to move the ball one inch. Here's the Ashby with the punt, a very high punt. Remember, he's bothered by that injury. A catch call for it to 25, and he's going to run out of there to the 30, 35, 37-yard line. Looked like he'd called for a fair catch, and then he decided to run with it, and the man who brought it out was Ben Sanford, the sophomore from Meridian, Mississippi. Good field position now in exactly the same location at the other end of the field for the Choctaws of Mississippi College. Boy, it really looked like number 34 for the Blazers. Reggie West hustling down there, almost like he got a clip there in the back, uh, pushed him by, but uh, nice return for the Choctaws, and they'll start up uh, with good field position on their initial drive. Had some problems with the clock early. Those, clock, those problems continue. One clock shows 12.59, the other one shows 12.12. High 12. backfield for the Choctaws. Motion man to the visitor side of the stadium. Under the center, going to hand off first man through. Rambles off the right tackle position and gains maybe a yard on the play. And the Blazers are going to stack him up there. Man who carried the football for the visitors from Clinton, the big fullback that time, and able to gain maybe a yard on the play was Jay Bourne, the senior from Columbia, Mississippi. It'll be second and 10, second and nine and a half, call it. Second and nine and a half at the 36 and a half yard line. Don't know how much time left in the first quarter. We do know no score on the board for either team, the Choctaws or the Blazers. Mike, we didn't have a chance to talk uh, much in the pregame show, but Mike Berry uh, is back playing. Now, after three games out with a shoulder injury, he is back and, and in the lineup. We didn't expect him to start, but uh, he's right there, right tackle for the Blazers. Under the center this time on second and nine and a half. Going to go straight ahead looking for room, finding it, and then knocked down at the 41 yard line. Good pursuit by George Parsons. Got his arms wrapped around him and finally wrestled him down. Got some help from the black shirts. The man who carried the football 
For the visitors was Kevin Blackman. Had that record-setting day last week. The senior from Mobile, Alabama. Call it third and a long four at the 41-yard line. No score. Blazers and Choctaws in the first period at Cleveland Field in Valdosta on a Saturday afternoon. The rain has stopped, but it's kind of gray right now. Homecoming for many VSU alumni who are back for a big homecoming weekend. Got a motion man to the visitors' side of the field. Pitching it deep. Looking for room at the 40, not finding a great tackle on the far side of the field. Great pursuit by Parsons again, his second consecutive tackle. No running room at all for Kevin Blackman on his second consecutive carry. And Mr. Parsons beat Mr. Blackman on two straight occasions. Nice play by George Parsons, the sophomore from Tallahassee. Good job of coming up and, and turning Blackman in. Great play. Great play by the Blazers on the option. Uh, had somebody for the quarterback and had two there to take the pitch man. Going to punt it away, and the punter for the visitors is Mike Nelson. Nelson's going to punt it from his own 30. Pretty good rush by the Blazers. A high hanging punt. Going to be taken by the Flash Flanders. It'll be a fair catch at the 18 yard line. They haven't got the clocks fixed yet. As a matter of fact, one clock is off now, and the Blazers get the football for the second time in the game. Here are the Blazers with the football at their own 18 yard line. Hatches in the gun. And a motion man to the home side of the field, Steve Greer. Going to give it up on the ground to Dominic Ross, and he's going to be tackled in the backfield back at a 15-yard line. Oh, my, he came hard that time. Had two players in there on him. One man was Cyron McBeath, one of the linebackers, and then the other guy was one of the defensive tackles, Roderick Upshaw, draped his arms around him, and the two of them pulled the big sophomore from Jacksonville to the turf here in Cleveland Field, and he lost a yard on the play. Call it second and 11 at the 16. Hatches in the shotgun. He's going to motion Sean Bender out to the left side just a bit. Three wide outs on the left side. Dominic Ross in the backfield with him. Hatch, long snap count. Gives it to Ross again. Ross looking for room. Tries to turn the corner, but he's going to be pushed out of bounds right at the 20-yard line on the far side of the field. Good pursuit that time on the far side. Following all the way over there. And finally, wrestling and pushing and hog tying and whipping him out of bounds is McBeat again. He's actually going to pick up a couple of yards on the play. Call it third and nine right at the 19 and a half. Ross and Bender are going to come out of the football game. And the clocks are still not working. No score. Mississippi College and Valdosta State University. Hatch on third and long. Blazers have not got a first down on two possessions so far. Hatch has got Blake Duncan on his right. Got the beanpole. Robert Williams in motion to the visitor side of the stadium. Hatch long snap count. Low snap. Looking over the middle, got some time. Now he has no time, and the ball's on the ground. Who's going to come up with it? Looks like Mississippi College. Everybody's fighting for it. Everybody's fighting for it, and who's going to come up with it? Looks like Valdosta State University. One of the O-linemen went down there and rescued the pigskin. Matt Moore came up with it, or did he? Yeah, he did. Uh, Matt Moore did follow it. And, uh, uh, a nice job by Moore to get it, but uh, boys plays their offense struggling early on the first couple of series. Here's Ashby standing at the rear of the end zone, going to put it away. Going to be taken on the dead, running to the 35, to the 30, to the 25, and knocked down right at the 25-yard line. A lot of guts there. Took it on the dead run and advanced at 10 yards. Good return that time by Ben Sanford, the sophomore from Meridian. Beautiful field position for Mississippi College, and now the ombre defense of Mike Majors has his backs against its own goal line, only 26 yards away are the Choctaws from putting some points on this board. First time this afternoon, homecoming, 1993. Mike Ben Sanford, uh, one of the threats for this Choctaw offense. Uh, he's a flanker, but uh, he's second in the Gulf South Conference in punt returns, uh, almost 12 yards per return. Coming off the field, being helped off the field just a bit, the Blazers, James Sermons, the linebacker, had some problems there. Brad Strom now in at quarterback. They started, as John told you in the pregame, they started Cedric Baker, but Brad Strom in there now. Strom on the year, he's had some success throwing the ball, 40 out of 73. Four intercepts, and he's had six touchdowns. Strom looking to throw right side. Man wide open at the 22. Juggled it a bit to the 15, to the 10, and pushed out of bounds on the far side of the field. Marcus Johnson pushed him out of bounds, but he gained a first down on the play, and that's going to be that great back, Kevin Blackman, out of the backfield. It'll be a first down, Mississippi College. First first down of the afternoon for either the Choctaws or the Blazers. Great fake by Brad Strom there on just a little rollout to his right, but made a great fake inside to the fullback there, and then just came out and uh, completely fooled the Blazer, uh, Blazer linebackers like Ross Harvey and Edward Mitchell and Parsons got 
uh, caught up in the middle there, and uh, Blackman slid out wide open in the right flat. Here's Strom under the center. Got two men behind him. He's going to go first man through. The fullback straight ahead. Bowls over a couple of Blazers and takes it to the three-yard line. It'll be second down and about two yards to go. And carrying the mail that time was Jay Bourne, the senior from Columbia, Mississippi, staring six points right in the face. It'll be second down and just a couple of yards to go for the first down. And they get three yards away from putting six on the board. And the clocks are still not operating correctly. We're still in the first quarter. And the Blazers are right now in D. Deep, deep trouble early. The white shirts from Clinton, Mississippi, 4-1-1 one one on the air. Strom is the quarterback, got a motion man to the home side and then doubles back. Going to give it to the fullback again on the right side, and the Blazers are able to knock him down at the one-yard line. He might have gotten the first down. George Parsons is there for the Blazers. And let's see, along that defensive front, Andre Hampton is there. Did he get the first down? That is the big question there. Again, they go to Bourne, the fullback. Where they mark it is a very important question. Looks like he's going to be just a little bit short of the first down. It'll be third and inches for the first, and it's he's only a yard away from the goal line. No score for either team, but a yard away from the Choctaws putting one in. They beat us twice at homecoming. And they would like to do it again, but the Blazers have other ideas. Here's Strom under the center. Two backs behind him, motion man, goes one way and then doubles back. Strom's going to give it out left side, tries to get in, will not. Blazers are going to hold, but I think he got the first down. Yeah, this one, will, this one will be close here. It looks like he did. Uh, yeah, he's going to have the first down, I think, so they'll have four cracks inside the one. Rasmus Harvey was there to hit him. Walt Foy was there to hit him. They lined up everybody on the line. They may come out and measured, but I think John's absolutely right. It's right down on the half-yard line. I think it's going to be a first and goal at the half-yard line for Mississippi College. The Choctaws have lost only once this year, and that was to North Alabama, the number one team in the nation, 38-28. They tied Livingston 22-22. It will be a first and goal at the half-yard line. Now the clock is working correctly. 7.43 to go, and that's on both the clocks. 7.43 to go in the first quarter. No score, Blazers and Choctaws. But the guys from Clinton have some ideas. Brad Strom is under the center. Two men behind him. In the backfield, got a motion man to the home side, and he doubles back to the visitor side. Strom's going to go right side, full back again. Touchdown! Mississippi College as Bourne takes it in from one yard away with 7.22 to go in the first quarter. Nothing fancy, John. They got it down there close and just kept banging that fullback in there. Yeah, I was surprised to see him use Brad Strom at quarterback because they started the drive at the 25 and, uh, you know, basically into the red zone. You'd think they'd have the running quarterback in there, but uh, Strom gets a, a big completion on the first play of the drive that brings it down inside the 15, and then from there it was Jay Bourne uh, doing most of the work. Charlie McGinn is the kicker, and the hold is down, and McGinn gets a good snap, and the kick is up. Looks like he missed it left side, but no, they say it goes through. It's 7-0 Mississippi College. Here's McGinn to kick off. Blazers going to have Blake Duncan, Calvin Walker, and Flash Flanders back inside the five-yard line. 7 to nothing Mississippi College, a shock early. Here's the kickoff. Going to be a very deep one taken in the end zone by Duncan, and he will not run it out. It'll be first and 10 at the 20 for Hal Mummy's Blazers. John, we haven't seen this team trail much this year. Last week against West Georgia and then down at the Citrus Bowl against Central Florida. Well, I mean, I think it goes back to what you have to realize about this offense. It's, it's kind of a hot and cold. I mean, uh, you can come out a couple of series, do absolutely nothing, but come over the sidelines, make a couple of adjustments, and and you know, find some seams. So uh, way too early to, to, to start being concerned, but yeah, it's always nice when we put points on the board first. Hatch is in the gun, got a man on his left and his right. Three-step drop looking, left side, got his man there. It's Pinder at the 25 to the 26 yard line. Coming over and make the stop for the Choctaws is Brian Richardson, the junior from Forest, Mississippi. He'll pick up six on the play, call it second and four at the 26. Fox running at 7.05 in the first quarter, and the Blazers trail 7 to nothing to the Choctaws from Clinton. I think what you'll see, Mike, is you'll see this Blazer offense start to take what's there. I think you're going to get a lot of underneath uh, pass routes, a lot of five- and six-yard pass completions. Hatches in the gun again. 
Same offensive set. Steve Greer in motion to the visitor side. Now they're going to give it up on the ground to Reginald Walker, and he's heckled in the backfield. Oh, way came hard, long, and often in Cyrone McBeath. Just had his arms around Walker as soon as he touched the football. Yeah, great play there by McBeath, and uh, you know, he has 59 tackles on the year. He's second. As we talked about, Rich Myers, the other linebacker, has 69. Willie Turnage, the other linebacker, has two sacks. So uh, uh, they like to the bruise, and they've just done a lot of production for the real maker's position. Walker and Dominique Ross in the backfield now. Steve Greer's a short man in the slot on the right side. Hatches in the gun. Got Calvin Walker on the left side. Maybe stretch him out a bit here and does. He's got the bean ball. Robert Williams, it was in his hands, and it flipped up in the air. And a good play by the safety who came over and got just a finger on it. Keith Martin, the ball flipped up in the air. Looked like that Robert Williams may have a chance to go for it, but not the case as now it's fourth down, and the Blazers will kick it away again. But uh, again, with the two deep safeties, just trying to hit a seam route up the right sideline. Looked like Robert Williams maybe could have stopped and come back and caught it, but uh, didn't do it. Good play by Mississippi College. Here's Ashby punting the Sanford on at the 42. He's trying to turn the corner, does it to 45, to the 50, across midfield, to the 45. Down there. Oh, he slipped right through the black shirts that time and gained an extra seven yards that possibly he should not have. 5.52 to go in the first quarter. The Blazers trail 7 to nothing. And again, the Choctaws are in flame red and black territory in front of the alumni on a homecoming gray Saturday afternoon at Cleveland Field. Thank you, thank you. You look back to last week, and one of the disappointing things was the play of the defense in the second half. We didn't really stop West Georgia, so uh, imperative to come out and, and, and make some big plays here. They bring back in Cedric Baker at quarterback. Baker's going to give it up on the ground again. They take it across the 45 to the 43-yard line. Mitchell makes the tackle. And a man who carried the football was J.D. Hampton, the sophomore fullback from Meridian, Mississippi. He picks up seven on the play. It'll be second and three at the 43-yard line. And the clock's running at 5.35 in the first quarter. And the Blazers trail 7 to nothing. Running behind a huge offensive line for Mississippi College. They... Uh... Uh, if you look at, at some of these guys here, left tackle 6'5", 260, right left guard 6'5", 268, and then the right tackle 6'8", 291. Baker at quarterback again under the center. Going to stay on the ground again. This time he gives the Blackman across the 40 to the 39-yard line. It'll be a first down. Marcus Johnson, Edward Mitchell in to make the tackle. But another first down. And as John said at the top of the show, these guys, they just want to run. They don't particularly want to throw the football. They, Hal Mummy said they like to run two times for every time they throw it. Well, that's exactly what they're doing so far. They come in here as the number two rushing team in the league. 243 yards a game on the ground. Only 153 yards a game through the air. That's number five in the Gulf South Conference. Now, with this great field position, intent to bang it out on the ground. Blazers rush four with three linebackers. Here's Baker under the center. Got two men behind him. Going to go to first man through, and again, it's the fullback. He's going to get maybe a yard on the play as the Blazers smell it out and stop it up pretty good. The man who made the tackle was Shea Williams for VSU, and the man who carried the football was J.D. Hampton, the sophomore fullback. Again, he'll pick up a yard. It'll be second and nine. Erasmus Harvey comes in. Ryan Branch checks out. We talked about the Choctaw's right tackle, Brad Creel, 6'8", 291. He's a senior. He's playing with 15 stitches in his lip. Uh, I think it happened in practice last week. So uh, uh, he's a tough, tough kid to be playing. Like him. Uh, he is a tremendous uh, size football player, and, and, and uh, he'll have a chance to come in and play in the NFL, possibly. Will stop the game momentarily. John, what do you think about switching these quarterbacks in and out like this? What's the philosophy? There? Well, it, you know, it, it's some some coaches don't like to do it, but uh, Mississippi College has done it in the past, and it's worked very well for him. Baker's in there now. He's got a motion man to the visitor's side, then he doubles back, then he goes again. Baker's going to roll right, look to throw the ball down the field, trying to get it right over the head, and almost made a great comeback route that time, Ben Sanford, but not quite. Over there on the deep end, us to State University. No chance to intercept the pass, but over there with a chance to play some great defense was Mike Gibson, the freshman cornerback from Bainbridge. Yeah, nice play by Mike Gibson. That time they sent Ben Sanford out in the right flat and tried to pump it to him and then send him up the sideline. I try to catch the Blazers biting on the short route, but uh, uh, number 30, Mike Gibson, the freshman from Bainbridge, does a great job of running the Sanford and uh, able to, to break it up. 
Blazers rush four with three linebackers. All in black this afternoon. Now we sneak another man right up along the line of scrimmage. Here's Baker. Fakes it. He's getting in his bag. And he's going to throw quickly to this side. And Blackman's going to catch the ball at the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Kevin Blackman. And what a play by Cedric Baker as he smelled the blitz coming. And there with his arms wrapped around him was Andre Randall. But he still was able to get the ball to Blackman. And Blackman takes it 40 yards for a touchdown for Mississippi College in his home coming crowd is stunned for a gloomy Saturday afternoon at Cleveland Field. A tremendous play by Cedric Baker, the quarterback. Uh, for the Blazers, number 40, Andre Randall blew in there on the blitz and had him wrapped up, but Baker just turned and had the strength to get the ball over to Blackman. Because of our blitz, we didn't have very much containment back on the backside, and uh, Kevin Blackman takes it the distance. Charlie McGinn for the extra point. The hold is down. The kick is up. It is no good. 13 to nothing, Mississippi College. 3.55 to go in the first quarter. We'll take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. You can find drugs just about anywhere you look, but you can find information about drugs just as easily. If you've ever thought about using drugs, think about the damage that substance abuse can do to every aspect of your life. You make decisions every day to protect yourself from danger. Some decisions are automatic, but some require you to think. The information you need is all around you. Find it and make an informed decision to avoid substance abuse. This message furnished by the NCAA. Mike Chase and John Lastinger just commiserating, I guess, up here in the booth on what a play that was. I mean, it was a great football play by Baker. No question about it. Andre Randall had both arms around his waist and he turned him toward the receiver, and there he was able just to flip it right off the Blackman, and Blackman, when he gets it, he certainly knows what to do with it, and he takes it for a touchdown. Four, check that, 13 to nothing, as McGinn missed the extra point. 3.55 to go in the first quarter. Here's McGinn to kick off. Blake Duncan standing at the goal line, and Calvin Walker standing way out to the visitor side of the field, and Flash Flanders on this side. They're going to kick it right to the Flash, and he's going to be... Will he run out of there? No, he will not. He'll kneel down just before he crossed the goal line. <laughs> Mark Beach, he made a tremendous block on one of the on-rushing kick return men for Mississippi College, and the crowd responds just a bit. Well, we're going to need something like that. We really need a little jump start here to, to get this Blazer offense in gear. Uh, Mississippi College has done exactly what they've wanted to do. That's come out in ball control early. And uh, they got a break there. Uh, they've gotten started with great field position on both drives, and uh, uh, it's worked out well for them so far. Hatches in the gun. This Blazer offense needs to get it going right here, and I believe they will. And Steve Greer going to go in motion to the visitor's side. Here's Hatch. He threw Greer 12 balls last week. He's going to throw the short man, Reginald Walker, 20, 25, 26 yard line. And heads out of bounds on the visitor's side of the field. And there's a man who's had his name called a lot already this afternoon, Cyron McBeat, the senior linebacker. And he twists and turns and gets the little wide receiver out of bounds, Reginald Walker. So Hatch is able to pick up a six-yard gain. It'll be second and four for the Hatch man, the junior from Mount DeSales High School in Macon, Georgia. Chris Hatcher, he's the son of a coach, Edgar Hatcher, who's the head coach at Southwest Macon. The Patriots also up in Macon, Georgia. 3.48 to go. Hatch fakes the run. Now he's going to look down the field. Maybe try to stretch him out. Tons of time. Got his man Calvin Walker at the 34-yard line. First down, Valdosta State University. Great job by that offensive line there, Mike. Gore Kerensky, Matt Moore, Sean Bostick, Tim Fleming, Chuck Stamey, all giving Chris Hatcher all kinds of time to look around. Good job by Calvin Walker working free on the left side. And Chris Hatcher, as he normally does, finds him for the Blazers' first first, first, uh, first, first down of the ball game. Brian Richardson makes the stop for Mississippi College. 3.33 in the first quarter. Blazers trail 13 to nothing. Hatches in the gun. Blake Duncan on his left. Motion man is Greer to the home side. Robert Williams wide to the right. Looking for Williams all the way. Now he throws to the short one. Greer. Greer at the 38-yard line. He's going to be knocked down as soon as he catches the football. And McBeath comes over and makes the tackle. Wanted the bean pole down the field that time, but he saw the defense coming, so he dumps it off to his short man. Yeah, it looked like he had Robert Williams working free on the right side down on a little 15-yard out route, but uh, elected to, to hit Greer. Uh, Chris Hatcher, I think if he has one weakness, he doesn't throw the ball on the run very well. He's had some problems this year, so uh, that time, rather than throw the long pass, just took the quick short one to Greer. Picks up four on the play. Call it second and six. Greer in motion, and he doubles back to the home side. Hatch is going to throw out this side to Flash Flanders, and that's almost a lateral there as he kind of threw it behind him. 
And are they going to mark it there? They very well might. Yeah, that they, and they will. will. That'll be a lateral. Uh, any, no chance Flash was going to throw that football. What do you think, John? We saw Reggie throw one last week. I don't know. I, it didn't look like it. Looked like he had Steve Greer coming out to block, and it was into the short side of the field. So I don't think that uh, uh, this, that Stanley Finder was going to throw it. But uh, unfortunately, puts the Blazers in a hole. Here's Hatch in the gun. It's 13. The ball's sitting at the 31-yard line of VSU. Hatch has got Dominic Ross on his right, three wideouts on the left. Now they back off the line. They'll rush four. Here's Hatch rolling left and looking to throw. Does it right in between to Kelvin Walker at the 50, to the 45, at the 40, at the 35, at the 30, at the 25, and Paul Edelman's at the 20. Calvin Walker as that just threaded the needle right between two white shirts and Calvin Walker, his favorite target was right there and he certainly made a scintillating run after he caught the football. Nice job there. Nice job, first of all, by Chris Hatcher. Had a little bit of a pass rush coming and he stepped up in the pocket, moved up, bided a little time there and found Walker right between a couple of linebackers. Had the first down, and of course, Calvin Walker, as we know, has the ability to make something happen when he catches it, and he does. Big play for the Blazers. Maybe that's what we need uh, to get a little uh, spark in this offense. On a third and 13, Calvin Walker carries it to the 21-yard line. Hatches in the gun. Blazers trail 13 to nothing. Going to give it up to Reginald Walker, trying to turn the corner right side at the 15, at the 10, dies for the six-yard line. And it should be another Blazer first down and will be as Reginald Walker made a nice dive for it and carries it down there and makes a great, great, great move. It'll be first down Blazers. Will it be inside the 10? It will at the 9. First and goal at the 9-yard line. Now this Blazer offense is starting to kick into high gear. Well, that's something you, 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 Guy Morris, I think they concentrated on last week. Didn't have much production running the football last week and... Uh, they want to they want to do that they realize that's a very important for the passing game is to make sure this running game works as well so uh, nice job that time by reginald walker hatches in the gun got a motion man is dominic ross the sophomore fullback looking left side got a man calvin walker at the 10 to the five he hits it hard right at the five yard line and wiped out mcbeath is there and also in on the stop for the visitors from clinton mississippi is shannon garrett the junior D-back from Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. Two minutes to play in the first quarter. The Blazers trail 13 to nothing. Boy, great play by Mississippi College there. You see, this team didn't win the national championship in 89 for us. I mean, they, they have, have a tradition of being a fierce, aggressive bunch of football players, and that's just what we saw right there. They really leveled Calvin Walker. Hatches under the center. Got Dominique Ross in his backfield. Motion man is Robert Williams to the home side. Lasers all in black this afternoon. Going to look into the end zone. Nobody's home. Nobody's home. Threw it right over the head of some on-rushing folks. Tried to get it to his tight end that time, but no chance for David Banks, who's already caught a couple of touchdowns this year, to catch up with that football. Yeah, Chris had to recognize man coverage there all the way across on the right side and just tried to uh, work Banks free in the back of the end zone. Just tried a little quick lob, but uh, Banks had a hard time getting off the line of scrimmage. Was yeah. held up. It'll be third in goal at the six-yard line for the Blazers of Hal Mummy. Hatches under the center. Got Dominic Ross and Blake Duncan in the backfield. Here's Robert Williams, the beanpole in motion to the home side. Hatch is going to look into the end zone again. He's got time. Now he is, though. Now he's going to scramble out of there. At the five, throws the short one. Touchdown, David Banks. Oh, they thought they had Hatcher. They thought they had Hatcher wrapped up back at the eight-yard line, but he slipped from the grasp of a white shirt. Kept his composure rolling. Boy, I mean, have we ever seen Chris Hatcher break a tackle? I don't think we have, and uh, if he had me in the grasp rule, I'm not sure that would have been a touchdown, but Hatcher pulls free and makes a little magic happen. Here's the extra point. Vernon Lorey puts it up, and it is good. 13-7, 125 to go, and the first Blazers are coming back, and we'll take a 60-second network break. This is the Blazers Sports Network.
and that's something to get this homecoming crowd fired up about. Jerry Dillard to kick off. Mississippi College going to send two men back at the eight-yard line. Here's the kick. Going to be taken at the nine to the 10 to the 15. Right up the middle, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30. Down the sideline, 20, 15, 10, 5. Goes out of bounds at the three-yard line. Oh, my. What a return that time. And saving the touchdown was Billy Bull. Great play by Billy Poole, but uh, Kevin Blackman, there he goes. Uh, that's that's a, a big, big play for these Choctaws. Looks like the Blazers taking a little bit of momentum back, and all of a sudden he takes a kickoff some 80-something yards right back uh, to bring him right back down the field. For the third time today, they're starting to drive uh, with tremendous field position. First and goal at the nine-yard line for Mississippi College. 1-12 to go in a wild first quarter. And timeout, Choctaws. We'll do the same with your score. Mississippi 13, Blazers 7. We'll take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. In today's educational system, where many bemoan the American public classroom as a place where young people cannot learn, Joe Clark has made a difference. On Tuesday, October 26th at 7.30 p.m. at Valdosta State University, Joe Clark will share his beliefs, strategies, and success stories. His message is one of pride in self, the value of academics, and how commitment to youth and community can make America's future leaders better citizens and better people. Vince Glover just electrified him in the wrong sort of way, as in being shocked as he takes the kickoff after the VSU touchdown all the way down to the nine-yard line. Brad Strom back in at quarterback. Strom's going to give out right side, and again, it's Glover, and Glover's going to take it to the eight-yard line. George Parsons makes the stop there. Glover probably still hasn't got his win. <laughs> if, uh, you're exactly right. I mean, it's a, just a tremendous return. Uh, didn't really have a seam in there, just found one and uh, then cut it back to the right side down in front of the Blazer bench. And... Uh, but I tell you what, this Blazer defense really needs to make a stop here. We got a good play there on the first down play from George Parsons. Let's see if we can we can keep him from getting a touchdown. Second and goal at the nine. Blazers send the blitz and he gets it. Edward Mitchell blitzes and he knocks Strom down. He smelled it out. He diagnosed it perfectly. And Mitchell comes in there and wraps his arms around Brad Strom and brings. This is two yards on the play. It'll be third and goal at the eleven. Nice play by Edward Mitchell. You saw him blitz in there. You saw him coming. And uh, the Mississippi College offensive line just couldn't make the adjustment to, to cut him off. And he came right between the uh, guard and tackle untouched and there to, to wrap up Strom and throw him for a loss. That will be the last play of the first quarter. After one, your score, Mississippi College 13, Blazers 7. We'll take a 90-second network break. Down, goal to go 
for Mississippi College. And again, Clevelandville has some clock problems as 1959 showing on one clock and zeros on the other clock. They got the score and the down and to go and ball on and all that kind of stuff right, but it's the clock that's not working. Now they're going to go back to the hand clock as they did at the start of the football game. Balls at the 11-yard line. Strom is still the quarterback. He's going to look into the end zone. Now he's being chased out of there. Now he's going to roll right. Got some pass through in front of him. Headed for the end zone. He's going to be at the one. He's going to be at the one. He's going to be at the one. Erasmus Harvey was there, Shea Williams was there, Tony Hill was there, but he did not get into the end zone, and that's the most important thing, but now it's fourth and goal at the one. Do you kick the three, John, or you go ahead and try to stick it home? But they're going for it. Uh, I don't feel like they feel like the, the way they move the football here uh, in the first half, they're going to go for it, which uh, I think I may have to go for a field goal here because if, if by chance the Blazers stop them here, we may have a big momentum swing. So if you're a Blazer fan, pound the floor. Here we go, Blazers. Got to stop them right here. Got a motion man to the opposite side. Blackman's going to make the run. Now he wants to throw it right side. Touchdown. And a flag. Threw it to Blackman for the touchdown. And the Blazers were right there with him, but he kept his concentration longer than Mike Gibson. Gibson fell down, and Blackman caught the touchdown pass and a flag down. The only way that could help VSU if it's an offensive interference. And I don't think it is. They're going to come over and decipher and unscramble. And they're talking to the Mississippi College side of the football. Yeah, I think it'll have to be a, a, a holding penalty on, uh, like, David Gibson there. Uh, tried to hold Blackman. But uh, good play by Strom. I think he wanted to run the option. But uh, Blazers... Uh, uh, David Gibson had come up and, and had good containment, but I think the way the play works there is just that uh, if the option's not there, Blackman's just going to continue it out into the end zone, and Strom has the option of, of lobbing a pass, and that's just what he did. And it will be a penalty against Gibson on the interference course. Decline the touchdown stands, and it's 19-7 Mississippi College over the flame red and black on a gray Saturday afternoon. Homecoming 1993. Now they'll line up for the two-point conversion. And Strom is still in there at quarterback. He and Cedric Baker have alternated at the signal caller's position. Going to line up for two as earlier McGinn missed the extra point. Under the center. Going to fake it. Now the end of round. Strom still got the football. He's going to roll right, try to throw it short. Got his man. Blackman again. He's Mr. Do-Everything for the Chuck Taws, and he just got a two-point conversion. 21-7. Mississippi College over Valdosta State University. We'll take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazer Sports Network. Valdosta State University presents Tony Brown on Thursday, November 18th at 7 p.m. Tony Brown has distinguished himself as a producer, writer, educator, television commentator, and film director. He is the host of Tony Brown's Journal, seen every week on public television stations. His standing as one of America's premier journalists has been matched by his status as a specialist on cultural diversity, economic development, and urban policies. Last year, VSU beat these same guys 28-14, but Mississippi College beat VSU in the first college football game ever played by Valdosta State, 28-13, back in 1982 at Clinton, Mississippi. Here's the kickoff. It's Oh, man, he's going to kick it. He's going to kick it through the goalpost at the other end, but he had a penalty there that really helped him. He could right through the middle of the goal post at the other end, but he had a penalty, and that was the penalty called against Mike Gibson down on the touchdown play. John, I was about to be amazed by that one. <laughs> well, you know, that, that was an interference call. Uh, Mississippi College uh, declines the penalty, right? I mean, they declined the penalty, take the touchdown. Where's the penalty? Why, why are we penalized on the kickoff? I don't, unless, I guess if it occurs in the end zone, maybe. I guess so. I guess that would be the call. BSU, first and 10 at the 20. Hatch is going to be in the gun. Looking out, got his man over here at the 25-yard line as Sean Pender catches the pass, and immediately McBeath comes over there and makes sure he stays down, although he didn't have to once his knee touched. It'll be a five-yard gain, second and five at the 25. Blazers got to move it again, and as John said earlier, the best way to respond to a touchdown is go ahead and stick one of your own in the end zone at the other end of the field. Blazers are at the right end of your radio dial. Move it to the left end, all in black. 
field is green, but the Blazers have the black shirts, the black pants, the black hats with the flame red on the side. Hatch is in the gun. Got a man on his right and on his left. Deep drop, look it, over the middle. Got a man there, it's Greer at the 42. One-handed grab by Steve Greer on the near side. Hash mark, and Greer made the catch of the game right there. Caught 12 balls last week, and he really comes to play every single Saturday. What a great play, great catch there. We see him working through the middle of the field like he always does, but that time, uh, Chris like he had overthrown it there, and Greer just stuck one hand out of his right hand and pulled that thing in and then took a tremendous lick. First and 10, Blazers at the 43-yard line, so that's going to be an 18-yard pass play from Chris Hatcher to Steve Greer. White shirts rush four with three linebackers. Hatch is in the gun. Duncan on his left, Dominique Ross on his right. Greer goes in motion to the visitor side. Going to give it up to Ross. Ross is going to try to cut it back to the right side. Ross at midfield. Ross at the 45. Ross at the 43. Ross at the 40 and out of bounds. On the far side as Dominique Ross made a great decision to cut it back across the field and finally grabbing his shoulder pads and slinging him out of bounds is Patrick Lloyd, the junior linebacker from Morton, Mississippi. First down, BSU. Well, it's great to see Dominic Ross coming back and having a big play, but I think you could see right there as he uh, broke it out around the right side. He really didn't have that, that fourth gear that we've seen because of that uh, that injured foot there with the, with the turf toe. So, uh, but, but a nice play. Uh, uh, good to see that running game starting to click here. Hatch is in the gun. Deep drop, looking over the middle. Now he's got time. Right side, got his man there, but he couldn't quite get there. Reginald Walker was held up right in front of the Mississippi College bench by the safety over there on that side, Tony Holmes, and prevented him from getting to that pass. Hatch actually threw it to the spot where he was supposed to be, John. Yeah, it was a good throw by Chris Hatcher. Again, taking advantage of a two-deep secondary. Uh, you got two safeties back on the hash mark. And you got uh, cornerbacks up underneath playing a tight coverage, and you can find a seam back in there, and that's right where Chris Hatcher was trying to throw it. Hatch is in the gun again. Don't know how much time left, but we're in the second quarter. The clock is not working. 21-7 MC over VSU. Hatch this side. Short man is Bender at the 36-yard line. Going to pick up four on the play. It'll be second and check that. It'll be third and six at the 36. John's looking over the first quarter stats. What do you got? A couple of stats for you, Mike. Chris Hatcher, 9 of 12, 83 yards and a touchdown. Uh, I think one of the stats that sticks out here, we had a minus 11 total yards of, of rushing in the first quarter. We're going to have to do a little better than that. For Mississippi College, uh, let's see, they have uh, nothing of real of interest. Brad Strom, 1 of 2 for 37 yards. Hatches in the shotgun. He's got Greer in motion to the visitor's side of the field. Hatch is going to take the snap, fake the run to Ross, roll right, look to throw down the field on the naked bootleg. He got a man there, and he had his head taken off, but Calvin Walker caught the football. Had his head taken off. I mean, that was some kind of defensive play there by Mississippi College's Tony Holmes, but Calvin Walker caught on the foot, caught and held on to the football miraculously, and it's going to be a first down Blazers on the far hash mark right at the 22-yard line, and the Blazers are marching goalward once again yeah great play there uh, great catch by a good concentration by calvin walker coming from the back side across the field and chris hatcher uh, goes to him and uh, uh looked like a great defensive play as you said but but walker give him credit he made a great catch calvin walker wide to the left side this time Reggie Walker goes in motion to the visitor's side. Deep drop by Hatch. Wants to go in the end zone. Throws to his short man instead. It's being pulled at the 10, 5, 3, 2. And he's knocked down at a flag, a late flag. Robert Williams is going to get a blazer first down at the two-yard line. Coming down to make the stop is Richard Myers. And what's the flag all about? Ah, uh, clipping on the blazers. It'll be from the point of infraction, so it could, well, it won't be a first down, but... I'm not sure this clipping could have been a low block. I'm not, but let's see. Yeah, I think they got Reginald Walker is right where the flag went, and it happened on a five-yard line, so let's see how far they'll move it back. McBeath is out there talking to him, and there's five, there's 10, and there's 15, and it's going to be back to the 21-yard line. How many times have we seen a penalty just uh, really come at a bad time? It just uh, it gets old. It really does. An inopportune moment, although there's never an opportune moment for a penalty. So the Blazers are going to have the football. First, and it wipes out. It virtually just wipes out the entire play is what it does. It's going to be first and nine 
at the 21-yard line. Hatch is in the gun and got Blake Duncan on his right. He's got the two Bobsy twins on the left, Calvin Walker and Flash Flanders. Hatch wiping his hands on a little towel here. The only now looking left side. Now he's got to throw it. Now he's got to get out of there. Now he's got quick feet. And he's going to give it up to Greer at the 15 to the 10-yard line. Steve Greer, first down, Blazers. Greer knew where that first down marker was and got to it before Richard Myers brought him down. It'll be a first down, VSU. 10-yard pass play. Hatch to Greer. Good play. What we're seeing from Chris Hatcher is something we haven't really seen, and he's moving around a little bit in the pocket, uh, uh, which, and he's doing it in, in a way that uh, he's giving himself some more time to look around. That time stepped up, moved over to his right, and found Greer right there in front of him. Blazers trail 21-7 to in the second quarter. Hatch wants to get it a little closer here. Got Flash Flanders in motion to the visitor's side. Hatch is going to roll right and look to throw the football. Short man is Dominique Ross at the 10. He's going to be three men jump on him at the seven-yard line. First man to get a hand on him was Tony Holmes, that same D-back. So to bring up a second down, he did not want to go to Ross, but that was his outlet man on the play, and he's able to pick up a couple of yards. They're going to mark it right at the six and a half. 21-7 MC over VSU. Duncan's going to come out. Reggie Walker's going to come in. It was about this spot in the field where Reggie Walker scored his, the first touchdown ever for Valdosta State University against Mount Scenario. Let's see if they try to replete, repeat that same play. Ball's on the far side hash mark. Hatch is under the center. The motion man is Flanders. Flanders circles back to the home side of the field. Hatch is going to throw it, looking into the end zone. Over the middle, get his man. by Richard Myers, but it went right out of his hands into Stanley Flanders' hands, and VSU is on the board, and the flag has caught his eighth touchdown pass of the season in a flag down in the end zone, probably against Mississippi College for unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, like number 14, uh, uh, Rich Myers, the linebacker of the Choctaw, slamming his helmet down. I think he was upset there. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, it's after the play, and so the Blazers should come a touchdown. Let's talk about the touchdown. Blazers got a break, Mike, because that pass very well could have been intercepted, uh, but it was tipped up, and Stanley Flanders with the great concentration uh, to make the catch. It's a big play for the Blazers. He gets them right back in the ball game. What it is is offsetting penalties, a holding call against MC and an unsportsmanlike conduct against VSU, and somebody jumped on the extra point, and it was blocked. It was blocked. And Laurie went down out of the Mark Beach hole, and we got flags all over the place. We got number 22, Blake Duncan, for the Blazers. He's down, too. I think he's hurt. I think he is, too. He's putting one hand to the right, to his right hand to the ground, and now Edward Mitchell is, now he's going to try to limp off the field, and the trainers come over and get with him immediately. Blake Duncan is coming off the field under his own power. That's not good at all. He doesn't look to be uh, like we're going to see him anytime soon. I don't know if it's a knee or an ankle, but uh, Coach Jim Madalino quickly attending to him. MC jumped, and the penalty is against the Choctaws, so Laurie puts it up and through, and he kicks it right out into the trees in the yard on the other side, and the Blazers have narrowed the gap to 21-14 in the second period, and we'll take a 60-second network break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. 